at this. So to begin with, and unfortunately since I don't see her here, I'd like to thank Megan for giving me the inspiration for this speech. And in, in my first and initial meeting here, um, she delivered a speech about the patterns that she um, that she experienced when choosing things in her life. You know, basically, um, she was talking about, for those of you who weren't here to experience that speech, she was talking about whenever she made a big decision in her life, you know, the pattern was something would always get in the way. You know, and as I listened to her, I started to realize that the word she probably really intended to use was obstacles. Because the patterns or obstacles she described were the many frustrations she encountered when dealing with her life decisions. But as I continued to listen, a word popped into my head and it kept reverberating around through my skull, and the word was choice. My interpretation of her speech led me to the choices she made when presented with these obstacles. See, I began to know this. She always chose to fight through the obstacle regardless of how the obstacle fought her. In my opinion, Megan's speech actually showcased more of her resilience than how life's obstacles work against her. So that you understand why I noticed this, you see, I have chosen to be a life transitions coach as my next major life decision. And as a coach, one of my objectives is to create synergy with my client, but also show my clients many different interpretations of how their lives have played out. It is their choice and the choices they have and which perspective to see and acknowledge. So in Megan's story, it's, it's easy to see the obstacles that impeded her progress, but you can also choose to see how she overcame them. But both are true, but one version may inspire more than the other. So, unfortunately, she's not here, so I thank Megan. I had a coaching moment, and I, asked, I just had to run with it. So, unfortunately, she's not here to thank. <laughs> so then, I began to wonder about all the choices I made that led me from New York City to Vermont, and all the different interpretations one can have. But more importantly, I was reminded about what I chose to believe, who I chose to believe, and whom I chose to ignore to attain the life that I wanted. You see, in my Filipino culture, and in my family, I was brought up to assimilate and not attract unnecessary attention to myself. I was influenced, like many, by my parents and elders to follow the most responsible path possible. Usually that meant going to college, grad school, becoming a doctor, lawyer, businessman of some sort. So as I progressed, I had some very important choices to make. Should I choose to follow that, what, the thing that they told me or choose another course? And at first, like most people, I chose to follow. But I noticed very quickly that whenever I chose a path that was not best suited to my own, my own desires and needs, things often didn't go very well. For example, in college I chose a major of economics um, because my dad said it would lead to a good job. Bad idea. I failed an intro class my first semester in college. I needed a course correction and I needed it badly, but I didn't follow through. After stumbling through a variety of business classes, when I graduated I chose to apply to another financial institution because my daddy had connections and he figured that I figured that was the best choice I had at the time. So for four years I bounced around from one finance, financial institution to another and then I realized to myself, why the heck am I choosing a job in an in a industry that I have absolutely no interest in? Why am I not choosing to follow what I want? What do I believe will happen if I do what I want? And if I don't like the answer I come up with, why don't I believe something different? So that's what I decided to do. At age 28, I chose to follow my dream of entering and working in the entertainment industry, and I moved to LA. To make a long story short, that decision has led to a successful 12-year career in the television and television production. I also met my wife, and eventually, I gained the approval from my father, who had no idea how well I could do in that industry. So I think his exact words were like, so what, you want to make money in movies? Like, how are you going to do that? And as I look back at that question, well, you see, I was able to do it. So here I am at the precipice of another major life decision. My situation is a little different. I have a wife, a son, and I'm not making a regular income now because I've chosen to develop my coaching business and slowly move away from the television industry. My instincts have told me to follow a new path. And because of the success of my first decision, I've chosen to continue to follow. So we sold the condo in Manhattan, packed up our stuff, and moved here to Vermont. We're living with my wife's family, and we're beginning to raise our infant son and save some money. I battle internally every day with whether or not I'm doing the right thing, and I feel, I always feel the unsaid words from my parents and friends, trying so hard not to criticize and just love and support us, but I can feel it. I know they're just concerned, but at this point, they know their words are futile because they know what I truly believe work, what works best for me will work better for my family. Even my wife believes that. And I can imagine 
There are many interpretations people may have of the choices that I've made, but the only one that truly counts, my own. So as I contemplate choosing to become part of this wonderful group of public speakers, I'm confident it will improve my speaking ability, increase my self-confidence, and lead to some great relationships here in Vermont. But one thought prevails over any, any other. I hope I can choose to trust and follow this pattern my whole life. In other words, despite all the doubts and obstacles throughout my journey, I realize now that if it really just tested what I wanted and how badly I wanted it. So thank you for your time. I'm ecstatic to make the choice to come here and be with all of you, and I look forward to making a lot of good acquaintances in, in the months to come. Thank you.